Okay, good evening. This is David from Long Road Physics Department. I'm in mission control here, as you can see behind me in the prep room. Um, and I'm going to give a little introduction to uh, what would be normally the open evening. I've got a few slides to talk about physics with one or two uh, key messages in there. And um, we've got some students who are going to answer some of the frequently asked questions. So I'm just going to um, get up my little presentation on here. I'll leave my video feed on the right hand side so you can see me as well uh, as we go through this. We've also got a Q&A uh, chat um, possibility where you can fire in questions to the other physics teacher who is Moses um, and Moses will answer those as best he can. Um, if there's any what we need to think about or get back to you in a bit more detail we'll do that after the event but uh, we can do some reasonably simple things live. So introduction to A-level physics at Long Road. Um, first thing is that um, I'm David, David Jones. I'm actually head of department, so I'm head of science. I'm also a teacher of physics and course team leader for physics. Um, and those are my details. So these will be uh, on the video recording of this for perpetuity. So you'll be able to find me. Uh, my office, my lab C111 and the generic email address for me, djones at longroad.ac.uk. Uh, other physics teacher is Moses, who, as I said, is in the background doing the chat um, answers. Um, he's working out of uh, lab C112 and again, he's very easily contactable except for the typo. Sorry about that. Um, so that should be at Long Road. Don't know where the S came from. Dot AC dot UK. Um, we're available for uh, students at all times, basically, um, especially now we've got this Teams uh, uh, situation going. They can ping us on Teams, they can ping us on emails, they can come and see us uh, during the day at any time, obviously talk to us after lessons or before lessons. And equally, we have two lessons a week which are free of any teaching at all in the college called Study Plus Time. And they can find us if they need to to ask any questions then. So um, basically the course comprises of six modules. Four of the modules are physics content. Um, two of them are sort of generic little um, bits and pieces that you need to be able to have under your belt for A-level physics. So one's physics basics, that's about things like uh, units, prefixes, and the other one is practical skills. Um, the four content modules are forces and motion, electrons, waves and photons, and those two are completed in the first year. So we do forces and motion before Christmas. And then after Christmas, up to probably just after Easter, we're doing electrons, waves and photons. And then that's replicated again in year two, where the first module is Newtonian world um, and astrophysics. That's done before Christmas. And then after Christmas, um, particles and medical physics takes us up to Easter. Um, interesting links there because the forces and motion is obviously about um, mechanics and Newtonian world and astrophysics build on that. So increasing the level of uh, challenge, complexity and interest, of course, um, in the way that things move. The assessment for your A-level is three final papers. So in the summer of your final year, you will sit three papers, um, fairly big ones. Uh, I'll talk about them in a second. Um, and every single thing um, or whatever happens in those papers is the only thing that goes into your final grade. So it's a linear course. There's no continual assessment whatsoever uh, as far as the exam goes during the course. Uh, we obviously have assessment points during the two years to check how you're getting on and how you're progressing. And in terms of the exam grade, everything um, that happens in those three papers determines your final outcome. Um, practical skill development. Um, so I mentioned that the, one of the modules is called practical skills. Practical skill development is essentially recorded over the two years. So we have practicals which we um, show you and teach you how to develop the various skills that are required. And at the end, if you can, sh if you have given me evidence that shows me that, um, that you've done that over two years, and I'll be recording that, you know, literally with a with a tick tally chart across the year. Um, both years, um, you will achieve the practical endorsement, which is simply a tick, no grade whatsoever. So that's a picture of uh, four students actually from uh, 2017. Um, we were doing a little bit of simple harmonic motion with a, a mass on a piece of uh, on, on a spring. 
um, a good bunch of students actually. Um, uh, Emily in the middle there went to Manchester University to study astrophysics, uh, having got straight A stars in her subjects at Long Road. And I asked her why she wanted to go to Manchester to study astrophysics and she said because Professor Brian Cox teaches there. That's the only reason. Well, well done to her, she did really well. Um, what about the exams? OK, so the exams, as I said, are three of them. The papers are called Modelling Physics, which um, tests you on Module 3, that was Forces and Motion, and Module 5, which was the Newtonian world, two and a quarter hours. Exploring Physics is another one, two and a quarter hours, which tests you on Electrons, Waves and Photons, Module 4, and Module 6, the Particles. And then there's a, a one and a half hour exam called Unifying Physics, which essentially has questions which uh, can come from any part of the spec. So um, that's why it's called Unifying Physics. If you wanted to look for the specification, um, you'd look for, do a Google search for OCR Physics A, and there's a little qualifier after that from 2015. That's when our new spec started, and um, we've been doing it since then. Photos here are a few of the activities that past um, groups have been able to get involved in. So top left was a, a really interesting, um, a really interesting uh, episode where we were able to get students on what were called project days and they went to Amazon um, and they were programming an Amazon Echo to answer questions on a particular subject. Uh, top right was uh, students of their own choice said uh, they wanted to get involved in the International Space Design Competition. It's run in Cambridge University Engineering Department by some of the students. They had to uh, design a mining uh, spacecraft that would orbit a planet and mine uh, vital minerals from the surface. Uh, they were there from nine in the morning till nine in the evening, although pizza was provided. <laughs> uh, down at the bottom, that's a visit to TWI, the Welding Institute, uh, as they say, know all about uh, everything there is to do with uh, joining metals to high specifications. And uh, Matt there in the green T-shirt was showing them around some of the apparatus and mechanisms that they use. So um, Long Road is pretty unique, um, or it has been for years, but uh, others are joining in now, but pretty unique in that you can um, mix and match. You don't have to just do A-levels. Your study programme will be three subjects. Um, you could do three A-levels, top left-hand side, three um, purple blobs, um, or you can mix both um, A-levels and diplomas. So um, you might be doing, for instance, um, on the top right, one A level with a purple blob and two um, extended uh, certificate applied courses for the two other red subjects. Or you can do two uh, extended certificates and uh, one A level and the two uh, extended certificates would make up what's known as a diploma. Um, if you wanted to do all three, so in science we offer applied science, you can do the extended diploma where every single one of your three choices is applied science and you're doing science through and through. But uh, essentially very powerful because you can choose subjects that you like, that you enjoy um, and also obviously that you're good at and uh, mix and match to whatever you, you feel your strengths are. Jolly good. Um, these are the sort of a uh, bit more about trips and visits and workshops and things that we've done. Um, this is a list of things that have occurred over, over the past few years. Obviously, um, unfortunately, with the current climate, some of these things are not happening or we're doing the best we can to take up opportunities that are um, remote, you know, done via Teams or Zoom. But in the past, we've, uh, as I mentioned, we visited the Department of Engineering at Cambridge University. They're very open uh, to doing days and projects of all sorts. Um, there's been STEM events promoting science and related um, subjects in, in Duxford. Um, the engineering education scheme is um, what the top picture there is. Uh, you can see it's got um, some students there with a, a desk and a, and a display. The engineering education scheme is a national scheme with uh, links to local companies and we've been linked to ARM for the past uh, five years. So we get ARM engineers coming in on a weekly basis for about six months to mentor our team. And uh, they basically they say to them, here's a, a microprocessor. Um, a thing called an embed chip that ARM have. Uh, here's a microprocessor, how are you going to change the world? And uh, these guys came up with a fantastic design, uh, maybe not aesthetically, the goggles, the glasses, have got microphones around the top 
um, and LEDs around the visual bit and they can detect where sounds are coming from. And it was in response to a questionnaire they did where visually uh, impaired people were saying that quite often they didn't know where the noise was coming from and they didn't know which way to turn. And uh, those guys did a great job. They won the people's choice of the of the year, which was good. Um, we've also been to the Calvi Institute of Cosmology. Um, TWI have come in to teach us as well as taking us out to their their place on the on the Grant to Science Park. Uh, students have been involved in the bursary scheme, Nuffield bursary scheme, um, to get work experience uh, in a science environment before going on to do science degrees. Um, and the Head Start program, we've had a couple of students have done that where they do a couple of weeks uh, in a university doing work as if you were an undergraduate to see what it's like and see whether you want to commit to doing that. Um, every year the project days used to be linked with four companies where they would come in and design, uh, no, sorry, they'd set them a challenge and then the students' um, teams would be competing against each other and the best team would get a day out in a, in, a, in a company and there'd be a design challenge for them to spend the whole day on with scientists and engineers from that company. As I say, we did the World Space Engineering Competition and um, we have for about four years now hosted French students from a school in Paris. Uh, this is what all these smiling faces are down at the bottom. They come over and spend an hour and a half meeting and greeting our students and then they go and see what lessons are like in Long Road. That's uh, very interesting for them. So um, what can you do after Long Road? Well, again, we're trying to promote the idea with all of these various activities that there's an enormous range of things you need to think about. We have had students going to things like motorsport, computer games, biomedical sciences, architecture, and then I didn't even start to list uh, all the engineering because, of course, an enormous amount of students are doing physics and maths, both of those two essential for engineering, um, and have gone on to do that at uh, universities. We do also have students entering um, apprenticeships. They'll be looking for higher degree apprenticeships with companies, so they would be therefore uh, employed as an employee at the company, but then being given a day off a week, something like that, to part time to do a degree which the uh, company is paying for. Um, and we've had some students who've been very, very successful in that respect. Um, degrees that we have had in recent years, astrophysics at Manchester, chemical physics at Bristol, and you can read down through the list. Uh, mechanical engineering at Imperial. So the girl who was uh, in the team, the arm team with the with this with the sound activated LED lights on the specs um, has gone to mechanical engineering at Imperial College. Well done, Rachel, one of our best students last year. Um, went there because she's very interested in designing boats, apparently. So I'll try and uh, find out at some stage whether she's actually designed a boat. Um, oh, and there she is on the right hand side. She accepted an unconditional offer to study mechanical engineering, uh, strong interest in boat design. Another great student last year, Emmanuel. Um, he's slightly different route. He was interested in design as well. He went to Brunel London University and he sent me an email the other day saying it was challenging, but great fun. Although COVID had definitely impacted on the way campus worked. <laughs> God bless him. But I think he's still enjoying it. So all the best to him. Um, so these are a couple of couple of things that uh, are, are going on. Um, if we can get back to normal come 2021, we'd be hopefully looking at looking at welcome days where you'd be able to come and see what Long Road was like. And we do normally have the open evenings in the summer um, where you can come along and see exactly um, what is uh, happening in terms of, you know, um, the physics labs, uh, the physics experiments and things that are going on. So I'm going to just queue up uh, one of our students now. So that's Paloma and um, she's going to uh, introduce herself. Hello, Paloma. How are you? Hi, um, I'm Paloma and I take chemistry, physics, maths and further maths. Well done, Paloma. And um, I'm going to ask her some of the uh, frequently asked questions, the FAQs that we've got. So the first one for you, Paloma, is, is there summer work? Uh, yes, there is summer work, but I found it really interesting. Uh, this year it was about Elon Musk's satellite Starlink project. Um, and it was just a lot of fun to learn about that. And I think it's a great way to prepare yourself uh, for class, you know, so that way you can get a quick start with it. And it lets the teacher know like where you stand within the subject. 
Very good. Yes, fantastic. We had a good time talking about that. Uh, second FAQ for you, Paloma. What was it like moving up from school to college? Um, for me, the staff and the teachers at Long Road uh, made sure that the transition was really smooth. And I honestly didn't feel like it was a big hit. You know, it wasn't uh, too rough, even with the COVID situation. Um, and I think that the key factor is that we're now in classes where everyone has similar interests. Um, so, for example, I'm interested in nanoscience and someone else is interested in astrophysics, but we still enjoy the subject of physics. Brilliant. Lovely. Great to hear from you, Paloma. Thanks very much for doing this. I know you've obviously got other things to do at home. Excellent. So um, I'm going to move over now to Christian. And uh, Christian is another one of our students. Hi, Christian. How are you? Hey there, uh, well done. Yeah. Great. Do you want to introduce yourself, Christian? Uh, what are you? Uh, I'm Christian. I study uh, maths, physics and biology. Excellent stuff. Um, your frequently asked question, Christian, is what is the college campus like? Uh, the college campus is a uh, relatively large and it's made up of multiple blocks, which uh, certain lessons will be held in each block. For example, physics is taught in C block. And the main areas for break and lunchtime is the marquee, which is only set up because of the COVID situation. And essentially it's just a big tent with many seats and tables available. And the cafeteria is just across from the marquee. Yes, that's right. And uh, so that leads nicely into the next uh, FAQ, Christian because it was how easy is it to make friends? Presumably the marquee is the hub for that sort of activity. Uh, well, I would say it is, but mostly in lessons you make more friends as you're all like really close together. And uh, when you need help, you just ask each other and some projects require you to work in groups like for physics practicals or any other types of practicals you do. That's great. So you've made some new friends from different schools? Yeah. Well done. Great. Thank you very much, Christian. I'm going to move over to Thomas now, another one of our physics students. Hello. Thomas, how are you? I'm doing good, David. I'm doing good. Introduce, us, uh, introduce yourself to us with your subjects then, Thomas. What are you studying at the moment? I do physics, maths and I do economics. Super job. So your FAQ is what is the workload like doing physics, maths and economics? The workload isn't overwhelming. There's plenty of time to do other work, but the work the, the workload is there to make sure that you go and get the best grade you possibly can get. And for example, in physics, they provide a very nice um, Moodle page with lots of resources so you can always go back and revise. It's really good. Hey, good. I'm very, very pleased to hear that. What about um, this one? What is your favourite thing about studying physics? You, when you, when you study physics, you explore all the different parts of physics, all the, all the little bit, little bits. For example, I personally like astrophysics a lot, and okay. exploring that is very fun. I like that. And then it's also people around you also have similar interests. May not be astrophysics. But it may be another uh, type of physics which then links together and you can discuss and progress the uh, science. Excellent, excellent. So I know we've talked about this before Thomas and you're very keen to uh, do more work on dark energy and yeah faster than light travel. And faster than light travel, mm. fantastic. Um, so you're, you're dabbling with the cutting edge of, of physics even though you've only been doing A-level for a few weeks. Yeah. Do you know what you hope to do? Uh, if I can get an a, a astrophysics degree, I'll go for an astrophysics degree. Um, Brilliant. But many options. For example, I'm toying up ideas of going to Cambridge and being a, a um, physics officer for a while and then do a degree uh, at the university. Brilliant. Brilliant. Great, Thomas. Thank you very much. I'm going to now um, get uh, our last student on, um, Aditi. Aditi is a second year physics student, aren't you, Aditi? What are you studying? Yeah, hello. Um, I take physics, chemistry and maths along the road. Yeah, well done. Yeah. 
Um, right, Aditi, I've got a, a frequently asked question for you. Um, do you have to wear a uniform? No, you can really come in in whatever clothes you feel comfortable in. That's There's right. No uniform. Yeah. So it's quite relaxed in that sense, isn't it? Yeah. Um, did you did you find it difficult or a bit strange not calling teachers sir and miss when you came up? Very much. Like in the beginning, it felt really awkward because like, cause like they're teachers, you can't call them by the name. So, yeah. but then you get used to it. It's fine. I, I'm the same. I've been here seven years, but it still makes me laugh a bit uh, when people shout David. The only person who shouts David at me is my mum. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so Aditi, one more frequently asked question. Um, can you take notes in class on a laptop? You can take notes on whatever you feel like. Um, so you can take notes on a laptop, on a tablet or just your book. It's fine either way. No, that's good. Do you do you use do you we pardon me? Do you use one yourself or you no, tend to I use paper and a file or something? Yeah, I use paper and pen. Just yeah, yeah. Oh, but, okay. but I know a couple of students who do take notes on their iPads. Good, good. So you're the only year two student at ET, so you've um, done much more of the course than the others. What are you hoping to get out of the course to then go on and do in the future? Uh, I'm planning to do a maths and computer science degree at university. Mm -hmm. um, and you presumably are applying now, aren't you? You've got your UCAS form in. Yeah, I did send off my application already. Well done. So yeah, it goes it goes as well as it possibly could. You'd be hopefully going where? Um, hopefully Oxford. Lovely, fantastic, mm -hmm. good. Well, I know you're a hard worker, so um, I'm sure that you know everything will turn out as well as it possibly can, Aditi. Thanks for doing this this evening. Thank Lovely you. Lovely to talk to you. Cheerio. OK, um, I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint now um, that are students off the hook, um, but uh, great to see them there. And um, again, this slide here was the one about the open evenings. We've got one more to finish on, which was basically the deadline for the applications um, for September 2021. Start at Long Road. That's uh, obviously next year. The uh, deadline is the 12th of January. There's a couple of uh, contact numbers or one contact number there. That's the college contact and also obviously email. So if you have any questions at all, you can email inquiries at longroad.ac.uk or if it's something to do with the admissions process, you can go for admissions. Um, so I think that um, pretty much wraps it up from my point of view. Um, I'd just like to say thank you very much for attending. I hope we've given you what uh, you need to know. And obviously, if there's more, you can contact us. Um, we'd be very happy to give you that information. So all the best. Uh, have a really good evening. Cheerio.